Hey guys, so this is part 2 in the series of videos in which I am showing you how to serialize the C sharp object into multiple different formats. The first part was about serializing the object into the binary format using the binary formatter. In this second part, I am going to show you how to use the XML serialization for any object. If you haven't yet watched the first video, then I would highly recommend you to do that because that is the introduction about serialization in general and couple of uses where it can be used. If you are just here to watch the code example, then by all means, just watch this video and you will be able to know how to serialize any object using the XML serializer. So I'm just going to continue from the last code and the first thing that we need to do is to add the namespace for the XML serialization and that is system.xml.serialization. I'm going to extend this data serializer class to add two methods to it to serialize any object using the XML format and then subsequently to deserialize it. So now let's just write the method to serialize any object using the XML format. So public and then void XML serialize. This is going to accept the argument for the object which we need to serialize and this time we also need to send in the type of the object which we need to serialize. So type and then data type and then the object data and then the file path in which we are going to store the serialized stream so this is going to be string the first thing that we need to do is to create an object for the xml serializer class and while we are initializing the object for this class we also need to provide the type of the data which we are going to serialize so i'm just going to provide this data type which has been provided as an argument now let's just check if the file exists or not so if file dot exists and then let's provide the file path as an argument then we are going to delete this file first and now we need to create a new file so let's just use a text writer so text writer writer equals to new stream writer and then let's just provide the file path and now we can finally use the xml serializer object to serialize this data which has been passed in as an argument so xml serializer dot serialize we need to provide the writer as an argument first and then the data the object itself and then finally we can close the text writer and that's pretty much it to serialize any object into the xml format and now let's just write the method to deserialize the xml stream or the xml text into an object so public and then this is going to return an object xml deserialize and we need to again provide the type and the file path from which we are going to read the xml stream or the xml text let's just first create an object which we are going to return initialize it with the null value and then let's just return it because if the object is not deserialized then the null value will be returned so return obj and now what we need to do is again create the xml serializer object like this one over here i'm just going to copy it from over here to save some time now just check if the file exists or not so if file dot exists file path then we can continue to read this file's contents so again text reader equals to new stream reader let's just provide the file path now we can fetch this object by deserializing the xml contents of this file so obj equals to xml serializer dot deserialize and now we can provide the text reader as an argument and then finally we can close this text reader and that's pretty much it to deserialize any xml content into an object and now it's time to see if this code is working or not. So from the previous video, we already have the code to serialize and deserialize into the binary format. What I will do is I'm just going to comment out these lines and let's just copy them to use them for the XML serialization tool. So 
data serializer dot xml serialize and then xml deserialize and we also need to provide the type of the person so type of and then person we need to provide the same type over here too as person and that's pretty much it the rest of the code should work like it was working for the binary serialization now let's just run it to see if the new object is being deserialized or not and you can see that we have the first name and last name of the person object which we have created in the beginning so this is how xml serialization works it is pretty simple and because xml serialization is in the plain text format it is very easy to save it somewhere when we just need to open up the file and make some modifications to the saved state and then load it again and that's pretty much it for the second part of this video series guys do let me know what you think about it if you have any questions then you know what to do use the comments area also make sure to like this video if you still haven't and subscribe to this channel if you are not already subscribed this will make sure that you will always be the first to know about latest video updates and this channel will also be helped to grow in a pretty good way and with that i'm going to take my leave and stay tuned for the next part of this video series i will see you in the next one till then have a great day